Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture 10 of COMSOL Multiphysics training course. Today, I'm going to study electrical stimulation for biomedical applications in COMSOL. In the first case, we are going to study the stationary model or also known as steady state model. This problem requires a bit understanding about the concepts of electrical stimulation. So I'm going to provide some details before doing the model. So let's begin. So let's have some definitions. What is electrical stimulation in biomedical engineering? Electrical stimulation means applying electrical pulses to nerves to generate muscle contractions. As we apply these types of stimulations through the skin, we can call it transcutaneous electrical stimulation. And if we control the electric pulse function into a well-ordered shape, we can get desired motion. That's why we also call it functional electrical stimulation. So the application of functional electrical stimulation or generally electrical stimulation is for the therapy of impairment due to the trauma or disease. To do this, we need at least a pair of electrodes to be located close to the targeted nerves. This picture schematically shows how electrical stimulation works. As you can see, because of a trauma or a disease, the connection between brain and the nerve is interrupted, which means that we can apply electrical stimulation to nerves to cause contraction on the muscle, which causes motion. This is very interesting and nowadays is very useful for helping people who are struggling with these types of problems. I should also mention that electrical stimulation has another application for biomedical engineering when we have a stimulation inside the body such as deep brain stimulation or implantable stimulation. But our focus today is on transcutaneous stimulation which is a stimulation through the skin. Let's continue and see what are the assumptions for modeling electrical stimulation. So imagine we are going to model the stimulation of an arm of a human. So this is the model we can have, which means we have electrodes which are located on the arm. To model that, we can simplify the model into a cylindrical shape. The comparisons of the results of modelings and experiments has shown that the cylindrical model is a good assumption for modelings. As you see, we have the cross sections of the cylindrical model and we have bone, muscle, fat, skin and the electrodes are located on the skin to apply electrical pulses. The two electrodes, one of them is the cathode and the other one is the anode. This shape shows a case of electrodes as thin films which are attached to the human skin to apply a stimulation. This is very common and you might have seen these types of electrodes before. So let's see what are the assumptions. We can have cylindrical models in 3D or 2D models, which are simpler, but the accuracy of 3D models are more than the 2D models. We can have a stationary or steady state modeling and also time dependent modeling. The stationary model, also known as the quasi static, and the time dependent is also known as the transient model. In today's lecture, we are going to model steady state and in the next lecture, we study the transient model. The other case of assumptions is the type of electrodes. We can have a monopolar electrode, which means that there is one electrode at the targeted location of nerve and there is another location which is far from that electrode. So in fact, the other electrode is located far from the target electrode. However, the bipolar electrode is when we have two electrodes located with a gap between each other. And it is also very common in practical cases. The other assumption is the type of electrical pulse. It could be current regulated or voltage regulated. Normally current regulated stimulation is used for many applications, however, Voltage regulated is also interesting from some point of view. I don't want to go to the details. So what are the outputs of modeling these types of stimulation in console? We can find applied electric field, electric current, and more importantly, the extracellular potential 
which is applied to a nerve. The other output, which is very interesting and important, is called activating function. The activating function shows the stimulation effectiveness. In fact, the activating function shows how a nerve fiber is activated in response to change in potential. How we can find the activating function? The activating function F is the second spatial derivative of electrical potential along the nerve fiber. So imagine we have this 2D of the cross section of an arm along that. So we have electrodes, we have skin, we have fat, and this is muscle. And we can have nerves located near to the surface or in depth of muscle. In fact, a nerve is located inside the muscle and each nerve has so many number of fibers. So we are going to assume that a nerve is located close to the surface and the other one is located far from the surface of the skin, right? And as I said, the activating function is the second spatial derivative of the electric potential along the nerve, right? So let's see how we can find it in COMSOL. So these are some results that we are expecting. This figure shows the activating function for a monopolar stimulation. And these numbers shows the effect of the fat thickness on the activating function. In fact, through the modeling, we can see how the thickness of fat can affect the stimulation of a nerve, which is very important, right? And this figure shows the activating function for a bipolar stimulation or bipolar electrode configuration. And these numbers shows the effect of the gap between the electrodes. This is very important to optimize the location of electrodes. I hope you get the point of the importance of modeling of the activating function. You can optimize how to perform the stimulation. Let's see if we can get some results similar to these two shapes in our simulation. Okay, so what are the assumptions and results that we are targeting today? We are going to do the simulation in the electric currents interface. We are going to use a 2D model for simplicity. However, you can extend it for your 3D. We are going to model the stationary or the steady state model in which only the conductance of the domain is inserted into our equations. However, in the time dependent, both the conductance and the permittivity are considered. In the next tutorial, we focus on the time dependent model. We are going to use the regulated current which means we apply a constant current and here is the range that is normally used based on the references. We need the material and geometrical values for our simulation and to do so, we are going to use one of our interesting references here. And for example, this table from this reference shows the resistivity and permittivity of the domains like the electrode interface, skin, fat, muscle and bone. As you see, bone has two layers, the cortical bone and bone marrow. Also, the interesting part is the muscle has different properties in the axial direction and in the radial direction. And we will see how we can model a material like that, which is not isotropic. So this is another aspect of this simulation for today. Let's keep it in mind. Like I said, the geometrical values such as the thickness, the gaps, the layers are based on this reference. Okay, you can find that in this reference as well. However, I'm gonna show that in our modeling, right? And what are the outputs we are looking for? These are some of the outputs we are targeting, the activating function, the current and field, and so on. We can have monopolar and bipolar simulations, right? So let's begin. Okay, so now we are in the software. I used electric current interface to consider both the permittivity and the conductivity of the domains. And I'm using the stationary model or stationary study because this is the purpose of today's tutorial. As I suppose that you are familiar with defining parameters and geometry, I'm not gonna do it in this tutorial because it will take a lot of time. Instead, I have defined all the parameters and defined the geometry already and I'm going to explain them to you now. This table shows the parameters I have defined 
based on the values I have from the reference. For example, I have the electrode length considered as a square shape, which is 30 millimeters, the arm length, which is 600 millimeters, nerve length, 15 centimeters, bone marrow thickness, 13 millimeters, and so on. I have a deep nerve, which is located in depth of the muscle, and this 16 millimeters is with respect to the surface of the muscle. And also, I have a surface nerve, which is close to the surface of the muscle, which is one millimeter away from the fat layer. I also have the applied current, which is one milliamps per centimeter squared, just a number, which is the lower bound of the boundary we defined in our slides, and also G as the gap of two electrodes when we have the bipolar system okay okay let's go to geometry and start making the geometry so the first thing i'm gonna start is the bone marrow and here is the bone marrow based on the values i have then i have the cortical bone up then cortical bone down then i have the muscle up and down this is very simple because they are all square shapes and i know all the thickness and the length of them based on my reference. We can review the numbers again. The fat layer up and down, the skin up and down. In fact, it shows like a cross section of arm along the arm, right? But imagine it's a 2D simplified system. In practice, you can have a cylindrical shape, right? Then I'm gonna define the cathode, which is the electrode on the left hand side and the anode, which is the electrode on the right hand side. I will apply corresponding boundary conditions to them. Okay. And finally, I'm going to define the nerves. You will see that in the future, we don't have to even define the nerves. We can define a cut line to get the result. But let's do it. We have the surface nerve, which is close to the surface and the deep nerve. So as you see, these are the two nerves defined through the muscle, right? And we want to see what is the activating function along this nerve to see the effectiveness of electrical stimulation, right? We are done with our geometry and now we can click on form union and build all. For the materials, again, I have defined them because it is pretty simple to define them. All of them are blank materials that I defined. For example, bone marrow, cortical bone, fat, skin, and electrodes. For each one, because I'm using the electric current interface, I need the electrical conductivity and the permittivity. I will show you that in the equation, the permittivity doesn't play a role. The most important part is the conductivity. I have selected these numbers based on the slide I showed you, but please note that in that slide, I have the resistivity numbers. So I need to convert them to conductivity, which is pretty simple. Just the inverse of the number, right? But as you see, all of these materials are isotropic, which means that I don't have different properties in different directions. For example, if I click on electric conductivity of the electrode or skin for the skin, if I go to electric conductivity and then click on this edit option, you see I have isotropic. And this number is based on the table I showed you. However, the muscle has different properties in the axial direction and in the radial direction. So we have to adjust that somehow in the system. So let's see how we can do that. So if I go to electric conductivity and then edit, I have different options to define my material, like isotropic, diagonal, symmetric, full, whatever. Full means you have a three by three matrix you have defined each item one by one. Isotropic means there is only one number which is valid for all directions. For relative permittivity, if I right click, I can have different numbers. I can use diagonal here and adjust the parameters based on the value that I have in the X direction, Y direction, and Z direction. So this is how we can define a sort of anisotropic material in the software, right? Maybe you have better models and you can use other options. For example, full means you have to define all the values for the matrix, right? That's it. Then I'm gonna click on okay and I'm good 
with defining the material properties, right? The next step is the physics. I go to the electric current. I use the out of plane thickness as the length of the electrode, supposing that the electrode is a square shape. But remember, it's not the most accurate way because we are using a 2D. I just want to show you the idea of modeling the electrical stimulation. If I show the equation to you, you see that the constitutive equation or the governing equation only get the conductivity value because we are using the stationary model. However, if we switch to other models like time dependent, you may have other terms which are somehow related to the permittivity as well, which means that the effect of both conductivity and permittivity are inserted in the system. We will show that in the next tutorial. Okay, that's it. Let's define the boundary conditions. I'm gonna define a ground boundary conditions for the outer layer of anode, which makes sense, which means that this electrode is connected to ground. And because I'm going to use a current regulated stimulation, I'm gonna use a normal current density. And then in here, I'm gonna select the top of my electrode. And then I have the inward current density. If I use current density, I have to apply in both X and Y direction. But once I'm using inward current density, it means that it is perpendicular to this. And how we can define that? I already have ID, which is the current density that we already defined in the parameters, right? I want to define another boundary condition, but I will disable it because I don't want to use it for now. But I'm going to use it when I have monopolar electrode. Okay, so I'm going to put a ground far from the location of electrode. For simplicity and symmetry, I'm going to use the two sides and pick this side and the other side. However, you can locate an electrode somewhere else far from it and then apply the ground boundary condition. So let me just pick these boundaries one by one and continue on modeling. Okay, I have selected all the boundaries on the two sides for symmetry and I'm going to use them as the reference for the case that I have monopolar stimulation. This is just an assumption as I said. I'm going to disable it for now because my focus is on bipolar. The next step is meshing. As you see, in this case, we are having all rectangular shapes. So I want to use another type of mesh instead of free triangular which is free quadratic, right? And I need to refine the size. Select entire geometry, and then I go to size, and then go to extremely fine. I may get some error. So I'm gonna click on custom, and then make the size of elements even smaller. The maximum size and the minimum size and then build all there you go my meshing is done as i have very small meshes you see everything is like black but if i zoom in you see i have meshes through the structure and there is no error in fact defining this mesh makes the result of simulation even more accurate because we have very small meshes right so we are done with meshing and then we can go to study for the study, we have the stationary, we are not going to touch anything else, and then we click on compute and wait for solving. Okay, the problem is solved. We have the electric potential as the default results, and now we can add more results to it, right? I'm going to right click and then add to the plot group, and once done, right click, surface, and now I can get the current results from the output of the simulation. Go to current and then current density norm and then plot. And then I can see how the current is applied to our system. This is very interesting and informative. I can even refine it to milliamps versus centimeter squared and use other colors and then plot again. And I get this result. So now, as you may remember, our main purpose was to find the activating function through the nerve, which is the effectiveness of our stimulation. 
And as you remember, that was the second derivative of electric potential along the nerve. How can we plot that and see how it looks like? Let's right click on results, add 1D plot group, and then in 1D plot group, we can right click, line graph, and then click on manual, and then for example, select the surface nerve, right? Which is the nerve that we're looking for. Now we want to find the second derivative of the electric potential along the nerve, which is in the x axis. This is a bit tricky, and I want you to be very careful how to do that. So, as you see, the result we have is v. We have to find a way to get the second derivative of the electric potential. So, if we expand the results and then under built in operators, we expand it and then we have differentiation and under differentiation we have the option of d tank which means that it can get the differential of a function versus x don't use this one because it wouldn't give you the result you're looking for so i'm gonna click on this and then here instead of f i'm gonna use v however it only gives you this first derivative so i'm gonna repeat that I'm going to copy this and then inside V, so we have the first derivative and the second derivative, all versus X. And remember, we have the minus of di squared V over di X squared. And the unit is automatically V over meter squared. But commonly for activating function, we use millivolt per millimeter squared. So everything is set and then I can click on plot. There you go very interesting this is the result i showed you in my slide it is very similar to that one in terms of the amplitude and the shape of the curve if i go back to my slides you see we have something like this right there is a bit difference because that reference may have used another geometries and also a 3d model with circular shape electrode which means that we have different results also less edge effect these peaks are probably from the edge effect of the electrode as we use the square shape electrodes, right? I'm gonna add another one here. And then in this line graph, I'm gonna select the deep electrode. And in the expression, I can simply go back here and copy this expression and then paste in here, right? Again, the unit is millivolt per millimeter square. And then plot. So as you see, we have the activating function for the surface and the deep. As expected, the activation is more effective for the nerves which is close to the electrode. This makes sense, right? Now you can study many effects. Effect of the fat thickness, the muscle thickness, the location of nerve, the location of electrodes. This is how we can see the effectiveness of our stimulation and optimize that for practical cases very interesting i want to do something interesting and see that we don't actually need to define the nerves what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna disable these two nerves and then build the geometry again and now there is no nerves come back i have to redo the mesh because we changed the geometry so we are done with the mesh now we do the study again compute so the simulation is done i have electric potential i have the current results now in the 1d plot group there is no line graphs right because we already deleted them so how we can get the results if we go to the data set and then right click and then add a cut line 2d and in here we can define the location of the starting point at the end point of the line which in fact mimics our nerves so let me just do it based on the parameters that we defined okay so i have defined the first nerve i can call this as the surface nerve and if i click on plot 
I can get this nerve here. This is not something added to our geometry. This is just a cut line we defined to get the results on that. This is very interesting, right? Same thing with the deep nerve. I just duplicate this one. I use different name. And I use different coordinates based on the parameters I define. If I unclick this one, it gives me the whole line, which means that it is not bounded to the starting point at the end point, but I'm gonna bound it to these two points. So I'm gonna plot this and I'm gonna get the deep nerve, right? Again, this is not something added to our geometry. It's a line we define to get the results on that. I prefer this one rather than defining the nerves because you are not adding a 1D geometry to a 2D geometry. And if your mesh are very fine, this is gonna work better. So now I have the surface nerve and deep nerve. So I can go to the line graph here. I'm gonna select surface nerve and I already defined the expressions, which is fine. And then plot, interesting, exact same results as what we got before. And in another one, I can simply parents, deep nerve, we already defined that, so plot, and I got this one. So I got the activating function on the cut lines instead of having them as lines in our geometries, which makes sense, right? So now we are done with a bipolar simulation and we got the result that expected. Now I wanna have a monopolar simulation. So let me just make some adjustment. I go here, I make the gap between the electrode zero because I want to make it zero in all my geometries. In here, I'm gonna right click and disable anode. And then in the cathode, G will be zero. And I want to put it at the center. So I'm gonna make it LE over two. And then I'm gonna have build all. So I'm gonna have only one electrode at the center of my geometry for monopolar stimulation, right? And here I'm gonna use the cut lines for the results. So it doesn't matter if we don't have the surface nerves, right? So I go down, the materials are the same. And as you see, I have a warning because there is no ground for the anode. I'm gonna disable this one and I'm gonna activate the second ground that I defined already which means that I have ground far from this electrode as we defined for monopolar stimulation. Like I said, you can make it more accurately by having an electrode far from your cathode, right? We are done. And for meshing, we have to redo it because we changed the geometry. So build all, now we are all set. And then we go to study and compute. Okay. The simulation is done. We have different electric potential results, different electric current density or electric current results. And let's see how is the activating function now. Okay, if I go to my curves and automatically plot them, there you go, we get these results. This is again, very similar to the results we got from our reference. If I show this to you, we get something like this. However, we don't have the two peaks at the top of the curve, which is probably because we don't have edge effect over there as that model used a 3D simulation and a circular shaped electrode. But here we use a 2D with a square shaped electrode, which means we have peaks because of the edge of the electrode. This is not our target here, but we will be able to model the monopolar stimulation. And as expected again, the top nerve is more affected by the stimulation than the deep one, right? I hope you got the idea of modeling electrical stimulation. In the next video, we are going to study the transient model and the important outputs and parameters that we are going to insert into our model. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it is a bit more detailed, but it is also very practical, right? Interesting. So stay tuned for the next video.